Hey, y'all. I wanted to show you a little bit about um, this puzzle that I like, and I think there's some potential um, problem solving application here. Um, so this is Kinkin, and it's like Sudoku in the sense that the size of the square, which is a three by three grid, indicates that we have three digits to place in each row and three digits to place in each column. And um, Easiest place to start is noticing that this box here has a three in it. So I will put the number three here. And this box has the number two in it. So I'll put the number two here. So at this point, um, I need to make some deductions. And this is where the problem solving comes in, right? So um, I can start in any of these boxes. And basically, I need that when these two numbers with this operation put in between them, in a specific order gives me the result of three. Well, that's fairly straightforward in this case because the only, if I only have one, two, and three to choose from, those are my digits, I know that I need one and three to be the digits that I'm dividing. And so um, even without having this number kind of pinned down, which also excludes the number two from the list of one, two, and three, I know that I have to have one and three here and here. And so at that point, I can actually make a conclusion because three being in this row means that I cannot put three here. If I put three here, then this is a contradiction and this is what I'm trying to avoid. I want to get every row and column filled with every group of the numbers one through three. So this tells me then that I can deduce this number needs to be one and this number needs to be three. So now I can press forward and look in this box or look in this box. So one minus has more options because I could do two minus one or three minus two. So I have multiple options, except once I start considering the fact that I've already placed three here and I've placed three here, that means that I can't do three minus two to equal one. I have to do two minus one to equal one. So therefore, I would put two and one into these boxes. I just do them in ascending order, but it doesn't matter. And again, I can make the conclusion here because I know one is here. This number actually has to be two regardless of what this box is. And given that it's an option, that's good. So here's two, that means this must be one. And now I'm ready to finish the puzzle. Um, the Six times means that these three numbers, because I have three boxes that are encompassed in the bold border here, these three boxes have to multiply to make six. So that's one times two times three. And I can make some more deductions because if I look in this row, I'm missing the number two. If I'm looking in this column, I'm missing the number three. And I get this sort of self-satisfying validation here that when I put the number one all of these pieces are true and every row and every column have the numbers one, two, and three in them. Okay, let's take it up a notch. Um, let's do, get rid of this. Hold on tight. Hold on. Did not mean to do that. Hold on. I want to go back to custom puzzle four by four. I want to take it up a notch. So, and we'll do a medium size so we can kind of see some of the deductions that might be included in this. Okay. So again, I can start with the places where the numbers are identified clearly. And then the rest of it is all going to be based on deduction and problem solving. Um, there's, no right or wrong about where to start, but I think that as you look at the options, you can kind of mentally think about where you have more possibilities and fewer possibilities, and starting with a place where there's fewer possibilities is helpful. So for instance, if we compare three minus to two divided by three minus, if we only have the numbers one, two, and three, to one, two, three, and four to work with, well, the only way I can make three out of subtraction is four minus one. So that means that I know this has to be one and four. 
I can't immediately make a deduction about which one is one and which one is four because I don't have enough other information. But I'll just leave that note there and kind of move on and consider some other things. Um, two divided by has two possibilities because I can do four divided by two or I could do two divided by one. So that's going to give me a lot of numbers, a lot of choices. One minus has a lot of opportunities. Four minus three, three minus two, two minus one. Two actually is not part of it, and that may be part of what helps me crack this because the two is already in the column, and so I can't do two minus one, and I can't do three minus two, which means this has to be three, four, and that indeed actually does break this open because now as I put in three, four, and I think about whether I know which one goes where, the answer is yes. This is three, so this can't be three. So that's the logical deduction that helps propel me forward. I'm going to use the actual tool this time. This is a four. This is a three. All right, back to the annotation tool. So got a couple things figured out. That did not help me figure this out. Let's look at this 12 times because it's a little bit bigger number. And so it's slightly more difficult to figure out potentially. There's a bunch of ways to make 12, right? Two times two times three would give me 12. The problem with two times two times three is I would violate the rule that I want each number and no duplicate numbers in rows and columns. Those are two different ways of saying the same thing. Every row should have the numbers one, two, three, four, or another way to say it is no row should have the same digit twice uh, or more. So I think that this is going to have to be one times three times four. That's the only way to make 12 based on three digits that are totally different. If this was like that right angle one we did in the last puzzle, I could do two times three times two. And sometimes that's a place where you can make mistakes as you're thinking about, oh, this must be the set of numbers, but you're not considering another possibility. So one, three, four, and that actually jives here. I, I, of course, I can make the deduction that this has to be a one. Then the three, four, I don't know which one is which. So I would have to note down three and four as possibilities. So I can go ahead and get out of my annotation tool, change this to the number one, and we've got the first column set. Okay, um, let's do a little more analysis here. This has now been narrowed down to one, two, because I've already used the number four, so I can't do four divided by two, so I could put one, two here, and I could put one, two here. And two divided by here, I still don't know. This could be two divided by one. It could be four divided by two. It's not clear to me what it is. And this one is not clear to me. It could be one, four, one. It could be one, two, three. It's a little bit of a mystery. So let me add in another piece of deductive logic. This one, four means that whatever the order is, whether it's one, four, or four, one, one and four have been used in these spaces. Therefore, in the column, we can consider that four and one are not options. And that actually helps move me a great deal forward. I can't actually say for sure which is one and which is four yet, but I can cross out both the four in the top here and the one in the bottom here. Because if I didn't cross it out, I would be led into a contradiction, right? I would have a one here, but then I would need to put a one here in order to make three minus. So this is an important next step in the level of the hierarchy of deduction. So now I can make a few conclusions. This is a two, then this has to be a one. This is a three, then this has to be a four. And now let's go back and reevaluate what we know. So let's see. Well, one, two, three, four, this has to be a two. That still doesn't pin down whether I have a one or a four here because both of those would result in division. We just point out that in Kenkin, the order doesn't matter in the sense that when we have the division or the subtraction symbol, it doesn't matter which one you put on the top or the bottom. It's just that these two numbers, when you put the bigger one first, will result in the division, the, the result of the quotient is the technical word or the, um, the, the remainder when you subtract of um, the, the answer that's in the box. 
Okay, what else can I conclude? Well, I feel like I might just note down that this could be a one or a four. And then I get that magical thing, which is if this is a one, four, and this is a one, four, I know one and four are split between these two boxes. Therefore, this must be a three. So that's another kind of step up in the level of deduction. And I think that's going to help us finish this puzzle. So this box has to be a three. This box has to be a three. And therefore, this box has to be a two. And therefore, this box has to be a one. Okay, let me back up and do those a little more slowly. So the reason I said this box has to be a two is because of the column. One, three, four, I'm missing the number two. The reason I said this box has to be a one is because of the six plus two, three, that's five, I'm missing one. So that needs to be one. And at this point, the rest of it falls into place. This has to be a four, this has to be a four, and this has to be a one. And now I'm ready to check and life is good. So those are the basics of um, Kenkin problem solving. In the next video, we'll look at um, kind of taking it up a notch. Oh, we're missing this. Sorry, two. Yep. As a non-native no, English no, speaker. Sorry. Um, I'm working on building my own Kenkin uh, JavaScript-based uh, web app so that we don't have to fight with all of these um, advertisements. But one of the theories around Kenkin and problem solving is that if you are a person who is concerned, oh, hey, look, here's a flat iron commercial. If you're a person who's concerned about your problem solving abilities, then Kenkin is a way to get infinite practice at graduated levels of difficulty so that you can kind of work through, well, this is not working, then logically this must be the next step. And that has a lot of implications for software engineering. Um, and I wanted to give you a place that's kind of separated from actual coding so you could think about just the act of problem solving. All right, hope that was helpful.